Welcome to the Love Cars on the Grid podcast, your global motorsport roundup with me, Tiffany Dell and Paul Woodman. Are you ready for this, Tiffany Dell? I am indeed so. A bit late this week, but we've been busy since last weekend, but we're still here. We're bringing all the news from around the world. What you're missing, what you should be looking at this weekend. It's, it's all on. I do the intros. It's episode 27 of the Lovecast on the Grid global podcast. And as Tiff said, we are a little bit late this week. For those of diehards who tune in on a weekly basis, we apologise. For those who have just joined us, perhaps, um, welcome to the show. And we're going to kick off in the UK uh, with... Um, Glorious Goodwood, the Goodwood Revival, which has to be the best, the most fun motor show in the world. And yours truly, Tiff Nadell, was um, was racing and you did incredibly well. I sounded very bad go, there. But... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yet again, you know, the only place in the world to be. I don't care if Formula One had been on or anything had been on. I mean, the Goodwood Revival is just the most magical moment in motorsport. And anyone who hasn't been there has to try and get there. And, um, you know, this is a 24 years, so the 23rd running, I've raced every one. Uh, and still, every time I walk into that uh, nostalgic paddock where the Duke of Richmond has recreated Goodwood as it was, when I was a 10-year-old boy, you know, walking around those exactly the same stalls. time ago. Uh, yeah, all right, all right, all right. right. But, uh, you know, it just it still brings a lump to my throat. And, of course, for me, I'm very lucky. On the th- it begins on the Thursday, because uh, I'm part of the cricket team, because um, Goodwood's uh, not so well known, it, it's the the most one of the second most recorded earliest cricket games was held at Goodwood in front of the house, and in fact the the rules of cricket were written uh, by the Duke of Richmond back then. So um, for me, uh, the Goodwood begins with lunch in the house with with the Duke, and then we play cricket, and I, I was top scorer in our team, which, which lost, but um, I got twenty three runs, so I was quite pleased with that, and then. And two fabulous races, one at the back of the green and a big wobbly Mark 7 Jaguar uh, all over the road. And then one fabulous drive with the TT and a lightweight E-Type where we managed to come out as top um, top Jaguar. Beat all these Cobras. It's a bit Cobra dominated now, unfortunately, because those Chevys, the big Fords and Chevys, they can get more power. They've, made, they've been able to extract more power relevant to the development of Jaguar, so it's hard to beat. But it was just the sun came out. Paul Woodman came. I mean, celebrities turn up. You know, he came and said hello to me. Um, but, you know, even, even better, you know, I mean, I, it's good that Paul Woodman turned up and said, but, you know, I've got um, you know, the ACDC front me. Well, why, hey, Tiff, how are you doing? How are you doing, Tiff? I haven't seen you since someone's told. And you know, I get to meet celebrities that I'm surprised they know who I am, you know. And it's Tiff. just... Tiff, you're very modest. This weekend. You're very modest, and and it is quite uh, surreal actually, because I know you as a mate for for so long now. But <laughs> but in that, you know, it, certainly in that in those sort of uh, situations, those circumstances, you are <laughs> you are the, the messiah because of course you know, you, you've been there, done it. You raced in in a, yeah. in a very early era, and you you know racing incredibly well as well and, and like you said you've been in every single one of the revivals everyone in his 23 everyone. years and i and fact, I, I did notice that you were actually racing against a certain mr jensen button ex formula one world champion um he was there i think he was one place ahead of me in the finish he was the first cobra i couldn't catch or, the, or it was two in front of me so it was one that jensen was great he's chatting to everyone what a lovely he's man a as proper, well yeah, yeah he's a proper grand prix driver that's come back giving something back to the fans and to have him racing. I just thanked him when I saw him. You know, thank you so much for coming back and racing here because, you know, we want, we want Nigel Mansell there. Well, some people do, maybe not me, but, you know, I might hit him. Of course we want Nigel uh, Mansell. You imagine, you imagine Nigel Mansell turning up to race and and so many other former stars, you know, it's a shame. But do you know know the problem is, and and not this in Nigel Mansell, but the problem is he is so competitive. Everything he does, he's so competitive that he wouldn't want to go there and not be as competitive as the rest of the field. But you should get into the whole spirit of it. The spirit of the Wood Revival, if you've never been, is just incredible. It's honestly, I, I introduce it as probably the most fun. Uh, you don't yeah. have to race to, to, to no. enjoy it. It is such fun. You go around, everybody dresses up. In fact, if you don't dress yeah. up, you feel a bit, a bit out of yeah. place. And you, the first time you ever go, you do feel a bit odd dressing up a little bit. But we, we dressed up. We, and I, I went with uh, my, my, my other half, my far better half. And we packed ourselves on lots of different stands and uh, had a good time. Had a bit of champagne, probably. Yeah, and I was driving, so I couldn't have the, the champagne tends to pop with a rock and roll going. I think you were in there for half the day. But, uh, but, you, but you walk around with a smile on your face. Everywhere you look, there are people smiling and happy, whatever they do. 
of the motorbikes are there, great old motorbikes. There's the Tesco supermarket with all the prices and labelling as it was in 1966, you know. And, yeah, it's just, it's a magical, magical four days for me every year. And it, it didn't disappoint. Do you know what? The only thing I'll change next year for me personally will be going for more than one day because one day is not enough. It is yeah, no, so it's not. good. No, it yeah, is you've so, got to do it two or three. It's yeah. so good. And, um, you know, the, we're not particularly blessed in the UK for having nice weather. But I have to say, most years, Tiff, it's been quite good. I know yeah. you've had a couple yeah. of uh, uh, awful... Um, it was only the Sunday morning's a bit wet. Yeah, but we're lucky. Again, a beautiful, beautiful day. And they do, a, they do a pedal car race for the children. That you get, yeah. like, 50 <laughs> children on the grid. Yeah like a Le Mans start. It's just everything going on. And, and uh, it, it is a magical really? and very... Of course, no, no air displays, sadly. You know what that, but that Horsham crash has stopped the air displays. But the cricket ends with a spitfire coming low, flying over the, over the cricket pitch in front of the Duke's house. And, uh, Do you still get a Lancaster a bomber as well? No, we don't. They're not allowed these fly past anymore mm, over shame. crowds. And this is yeah, it's what's all happened since uh, that awful crash. Yeah. Um, so, yes. So if you are in the UK, make sure you... Uh, uh, you certainly book your tickets. Try to go one. If you're day, not yeah. in the UK, get over here. Forget COVID. I know there's a little cold going around. I don't want to <laughs> make light of it, but uh, try, try if you can to uh, get it off your bucket list. Goodwood Revival. Uh -huh. um, say Tiff sent you and, and you'll get a discount, but you won't really. They'll probably put the price up. Um, so well done, Tiff. Brilliant, brilliant racing from you. And it's it so good to see. And you smell. I wish there was smell of vision there because you smell the fumes as well. And what an amazing job they do about the live broadcast. It's a... Uh, it's a proper, yeah. proper top-notch event. So, ten out, ten, wonderful. Ten out of ten to the Duke. Um, is it Duke now? Sorry, you did just say it, it is. It's the a Duke, Duke now because he was Lord March, but his father died sadly. What just over a year ago or two years ago now? So, Good. yes. So let's stay in the UK and let's go yep. to a circuit that I actually know, believe it or not, cross oh, circuit, no. <laughs> BTCC. Now, cross for those of you who don't know, and I didn't know about four weeks ago, but. Uh, off the start finish line so from the grid you've got a almost a 90 degree right angle uh, uh, turning and it's carnage in pretty much any yeah. race and sure enough BTC it was <laughs> in fact as, as we moved from Goodwood to Croft, I had to do a bit of touring car door banging to hold on to my sixth place in the Eater. And Marino Franchitti, you know, was, we were Brilliant. side by side, over the shit, banging doors. He had to take the escape route. So Brilliant. that was a bit of fun for me. But yeah, yeah, good stuff as always, touring cars. Um, as the way the championship evolves, you know, the quickest guys now have all got weight penalties. They've all got, I mean, the championship leader uh, started race one, I mean, it was 75 kilos, which is like a second a lap on your own. So some of the lesser known names are winning races. We had the Scott Aidan Moffat um, winning in his, in his infinity from pole position. So that was great. So he's Ash Sutton's teammate. So he had his first win this year in that team. But actually the star of the weekend was, uh, was Jake Hill. Um, he hasn't won yet this season, but he's had really good um, results. And he was second in race one, qualified second, carrying me. He still had 48 kilograms of ballast. Um, but then made a great overtaking manoeuvre in the beginning of the second race to get past Aiden Moff and won the second race. And he's now up to second in the championship. The championship, as always, the way it's a bit contrived because the quick guys are you know, carrying this ballast around so they can't score points later in the season. Um, but Jake Hill now is a real genuine championship threat. Um, we had what it was uh turkington won the reverse grid they'll go it's all going mad when they won the reverse grid in fact it was sort of given it because you well you finished seventh in the first race and got the lucky draw uh but he finished the, the reverse grid race but you know ash sutton's always there that's what ash sutton's now he's sort of learned a bit yeah he finished third in that reverse grid race i think he was fourth or fifth in the other races no sixth and fifth in the, the earlier races so he's still knocking in the points. He's, he's a little bit clear. So Tiff, uh, if, if Ash Sutton's that good, and you've always been a fan of Ash uh, Sutton, yeah. as am I, but if he's that good, could he have ever, could he go into Formula One single-seaters? He, he was a single-seater boy. Yeah, he did Formula okay. Ford. He was a star of Formula Ford. So that's why, you know, but could he, I would say to follow the, I love the kids that did single-seaters first, you know, because they need it's so often touring cars and GT, the single seater experience matters so much. A lot of the guys that go from, say, Clio's or Minis, as it is now, I don't think that they have the variety of handling when they go into touring cars. And I think it's good if you want to be a touring car driver, don't just jump straight to Minis, which is the, the current sort of support event. You know, try and go and do some single seaters because it, it does teach you more about setting up cars. So, could he go into Formula One now? Is he that good? Is he good no, enough? No, it's all too late now. Too no, late. But he should be going off. He should be going to GT racing. He might get a prototype race. You know, 
the world of Le Mans with these new uh, hybrids and the, the new classes with, with uh, Ferrari coming in and Porsche coming in. There's a huge future at Le Mans with more drivers needed. And someone of his talent should end up at Le Mans in three or four years' time if, if things went right. And I'd love to see that. Uh, but three weekends to go in touring cars for Josh. There's, there's now four drivers mainly in it. Josh Cook in the Honda. He's got the points. Tom Ingram for Hyundai. Uh, they're only one point and two points by Turkington, who's in third place. So it's still incredibly tight. It's and, tight uh, at the top. As always, the touring car battles will go right to the very last weekend and uh, entertain us all as they always do. Tiff, a bit of audio here for you. Can you just hold your um, microphone just out a little bit? I think it's rubbing on your collar a little bit. So, um, just getting, yeah. So, how about that? A bit of audio in, in between people. I hold it. I talk with my hands all the time. So, I, I keep know. on, you know, banging well, up and down. I'm, I'm thinking of our listeners. I'm thinking of uh, our listeners. <laughs> Sorry, listeners. Sorry. I get animated. I get animated. So can I just interject there with, with Croft, because there's a lot of controversy with Croft, uh, and again, a circuit I had, had no idea about four, until four weeks ago, um, but on a couple of the corners, they have tyres on, yeah. on the inside of the apex, and indeed on the outside of a couple of the apexes, they've got these plastic poles that stick up to, to avoid you um, avoid uh, going over track limits. Now, they don't sound very much, these plastic things, but they're heavy. They're really heavy. Yeah. And there was a lot of controversy at Croft because uh, people were hitting the tyres and they're saying, look, these are obstacles. These are, these are going to hurt people. Well, and Tim indeed, Harvey. Tim Harvey's on the rampage. Tim, He's a Tim Porsche Harvey. man. And his Porsche friends had their radiators smashed by tyres. Um, the, there were less all, of the, the poles used to be there. I don't think Croft had the poles. It was more yeah, just did, the yeah, had, had this had, weekend. Had, had, a, had a pole through the um, one of someone's windscreen. Not through, it just shattered the windscreen and everybody yeah. saying, yeah. But... What do you do about track limits? It's the conversation we have week in, week out on different circuits. <laughs> uh, I, I, I did, I did. Hear, there's been lots of funny things. People say putting landmines in there and, and all sorts of funny things. Uh, gravel, of course. But somebody said something that I found quite interesting. And it, you know the stingers that the police put out and give you a slow puncher. <laughs> yes. Do they do? No. 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 Okay. No. okay. It would be quite, I still it, think it would stop them. Would well stop built, them. well built tire stacks. So I was speaking to the guy at Thruxton because I was there after this weekend, you know, and he says, well, his, he builds his and the, 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 the conveyor belt wrap has got a bit of a gap before it hits the tires. So there's a bit of cushioning before it actually goes to the solid bit. Uh, and, you know, he, he, he thinks, I agree. I think a good tire stack is the only way to stop people cutting corners. You put a big curb on, it'll break the suspension, they'll crash. Um, the other way is, of course, pressure plates. And but this, you know, who's going to pay the, for automatic track limits? But even then, if we start having, you know, a bundle of touring cars all cutting the corners, and he's got a three second penalty, he's got a five second penalty. If you're commentating when the race ends live, which is what's the great thing about the touring car package, you're watching all that racing live. You'll have to say, oh, we've just got to count up who actually won because it's not the person you see. And it, you, I think you want to avoid those three seconds and five seconds if you can. I still think a sort of solid way of deterring people from cutting corners. If you're at Monte Carlo, everyone dreams of racing a Porsche around Monaco. But if you cut the corner at Monaco, as many places, you're in you know, your wall. apex, your apex, you've got a wall, a concrete yeah. wall, not, not just a tyre stack. Um, Tim made a big fuss about... Um, it was the, the, the Championship League kid that got a tyre. And the tyre actually that came loose from a tyre stack didn't go into the road. It was just on the edge of the kerb. So if, I know it does hit people that we want to avoid. And Tim was very adamant. And I see his point that, you know, it's a safety thing. Um, but we, nevertheless, motor racing is dangerous, as they famously say. Um, you know, we've got to somehow keep these chicanes. It's the chicanes are the worst ones, the right, left, or the left, right. They're, they're the ones that you get most advantage out of cutting. Um, you can't put gravel in those because then you take the gravel through and back on the track again. And then you've got a sheet load of gravel over the track and then the cars falling all crash on that. So it's difficult. Perhaps I think that the pad sensors and automatic penalties is probably the safest way, but it's that it doesn't make for the live racing. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's certainly a debate to uh, go on and on and on and and let us know your comments below. Who was faster in their prime, you or Tim Harvey? Obviously me. <laughs> <laughs> we had a bit of a coming together at this Grand Prix race one weekend when he was in a slow red, a slow round the corners and a bullet round the straight, and I was in a Nissan that was slow down the straights and brilliant round the corners and. Uh, I might have had to move him out of the way at some stage. But no, Tim's great. Tim's, a, Tim's been one of the greatest touring car drivers. And 
uh, and he's a wonderful character too. But he's really, I love his commentary. I think you know, he really is good. But he, he's really well, gone to town at the moment on tar stacks. Some people, when they do commentary, if they've been there and done it, they, it doesn't mean to say they're a good commentator. But he's been there, done it, and he's a good yeah. commentator. So he's, yeah. I think yeah. he sees it from from both sides. Your old mate yeah. Jason Plato wasn't very happy on the weekend. I didn't see that. It was I didn't see him quote? He's, I think his his hundredth win is getting further and further away. He, what was he moaning about this time? Oh, I don't know everything and everyone. He's not going to win unless he gets a reverse grid, is he? I mean, he's still quick, yeah. clearly, but there's some. Oh yeah, super quick. Well, the, his cars and both his, his his teammates really quick as well, but then neither of them's really getting the results. Um, they yeah. always, you know, they always they always want hope. They always sort of hope that they'll get a little favoured little rule rule adjustment for one manufacturer to help win a race or two. But uh, we, we'll wait and see. So should we move on from BTCC or anything more to add on that uh, little? No, that was that was yeah, touring cars. It's building up to its usual, you know, Titanic finale. Uh, yeah, but let's go over to the continent, shall we? Let's leave Britain. What was on last weekend there? Spa. 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 Um, it sort of went under the radar, and often I miss out the ELMS, the ELMS, which is the European Le Mans Championship. Uh, and I'll tell you one in a minute, but the good news at Spa that Robert Kubica won. We all love Robert, and he's now taken the championship with a, with a, a race still to run. He's dominating the Formula, really. Do you think Kubica or Kubica? I don't know, Kubica, Kubica, I think it I should know. be. Yeah. Um, and he shares his car with Wifey Yi, Wifey, I don't know how to say that either, from China, and Louis, <laughs> Tom, Louis Tom, 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 <laughs> A Swedish veteran, but they won at Spa. Um, but it's a funny series that doesn't get much publicity, and I don't follow it that much. It doesn't excite me. And I've sort of triggered when I was thinking about this, writing this little ideas of why. And I think it's the three drivers. I think it's more for financial. I'm sure it's for financial reasons. So it's a four-hour race. And you've got three super-fit drivers with modern-day driver training and diets and stuff you don't need three drivers you know no. the great days of group c when i was lucky enough was throughout the 80s to race you know you had two drivers for the thousand kilometers the six hour races you know you'd have a third driver coming for le mans and sebring and i think it was the partnerships the pairings when it was bell and x or mass and someone else you know you got used to those names and it was a pairing i know it seems ridiculous when you've got to learn three names, you yeah. write them down but to work out, you know, and you know that they don't need three drivers. And I think it's, the, it's, it's, it's just a bit, I don't know. And all, of course, all the LMP2 cars, this is not for LMP, it's not for the higher class. They're all identical cars. There's only one make that can win races. And they're all, they're all identical cars. They drone round and round with little flappy paddles, very easy to sort of operate. Um, so, yeah, I think we need to bring it down to two drivers only, but then there's not enough money to pay for the cars and, oh, it gets a mess. Can, can, can I um, just draw the listeners and viewers' attention to, um, I asked one simple thing, to hold his microphone away from his... Oh, his I've, I've, been re I've got to pick up a bit of paper at the same thing. time. You see, that, well, it's that's a stupid design. How much it's a stupid design. Um, how can I make it work? So speaking of, speaking of uh, endurance races, we were just invited to one today. It's a long way away, but next... Summer at Anglesey, the uh, uh, what is it? The, the one they have at Anglesey, uh, the oh, Race of Remembrance in thank November. You. Thank you, yes, it's November. It's not is next it year, they, they postponed it. It's November, oh, no. well, okay. We're racing in November then. We got a team you of might four. Be. <laughs> <laughs> you might be, you we'll might talk be. offline about that. We'll they stay, tried we'll to stay get me the, up there. We'll it's stay on the one, it's a wonderful, wonderful cause. Wonderful cause. So, you mean teams. I've got to phone Ben Collins instead of you? Is that what you're saying? You're going to dump me and I've yeah. got to get Ben. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, Do you know how cold uh, it is in Angles in November? I've seen films and photos. Hang on. But it's a wonderful to, event. Hang it's on, well I, haven't attended. You, I haven't told you what car it is yet. Is well, it I'm case? imagining what it is. is exactly, I've thought ahead of in you. In a caterer with no heater. It's <laughs> cold, wet. Oh, well, let's stay wait. in Europe. Let's stay in Europe okay. and just congratulate them. There's not many British drivers. That's the other thing why I probably don't get too excited following Elms. <laughs> uh, Will Stevens was the best Brit, former Grand Prix driver. He was third. Uh, Matt Bell was second in the GT3 class. Sorry, not GT, LMP3 class, which is the smaller prototypes. Uh, and Jody Fannin was fifth in GTE. So not much British success in Elms. But let's just say congratulations, Robert Kubica, and let's see how that series develops. OK, DTM. DTM building up to an exciting finish. That's looking good. Liam Lawson's this kid, this uh, Red Bull-sponsored boy that's doing Formula 2 as well. Uh, Alexander Alban's teammate, of course, in the, in the Red Bull Ferraris. 
he caused chaos in race one um, because he was on pole and, and he held back and held back and held back um, doing 50 kilometres and, and only floored it right underneath the gantry when the lights went green. And literally the rows of cars that are two by two were just bumper onto bumper onto bumper. Um, and it's such a Constantino chaos. effect, isn't it? If you've ever seen that on TV, yeah. it's a massive... Uh, he, only got, he only got third place after all that chaos. He was second in race two. Uh, and he's extending his championship lead. He's a real star of the future, the Kiwi boy. So he could have put Albon out of that drive that Albon's got at Williams, but I think they're holding him back. So Lawson is the next Red Bull Grand Prix or sort of Alpha Touri guy, I'd say. Um, Alexander Albon, he retired thanks to that chaos in the first lap and finished fifth, uh, fifth in race two. Um, but he's pretty much happy, and now he's not stuck in DTM next year. <laughs> I've keep on being, I've been championing. Um, do you remember Philip Ellis? Because he's got his British flag on the results scheme. And the, and the Ellis name rang a bell, so I've been saying, great for Philip Ellis, you know, <laughs> our only British driver apart from Esby Hawkey. But he's actually a, a German-Swiss Brit who's done all his racing in Germany. The Ellis I was thinking was Bradley Ellis, <laughs> who won the British Championship. So all along, I've been thinking it was our former <laughs> British champion doing DTM, but um, I'm Bradley, still, where are we out I'm there? still pleased for, for Ellis. That's very good. Yeah. Where have you been? Esme Hawkey, she had an 11th in race one with all Amazing. the chaos, but she was beaten by Sophia Flourish in the, in the women battle, and she Esme retired in race two. So Esme Hawkey is actually the only sort of proper British, 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 British um, a driver in DTM at the moment, so good for her. Yeah, absolutely, and 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 holding her own. Yes. Tiff, tell me about MotoGP, please. I want to hear and bikes. I don't know. Bikes. I didn't <laughs> see. I, I went pretty fast forward through this to catch up on the thing. Sam, <laughs> actually, last week I said because it was San Marino Grand Prix. Can't wait to see the bikes at Imola. But it was a, a Misano. So anyone that did notice my deliberate mistake. In fact, we usually have a bike critic, don't we, that picks me up in all my bike areas in World Superbikes. You know he what? missed this, that one. He missed is, that one. <laughs> this is what I love about uh, online and the internet and stuff. There's always people that are, are geniuses about certain different things. So. I like it. I love being tripped yeah, up. Too. I like tripping up other people. But you oh, missed that one, my tripper hold up, your, man. Hold your microphone. Hold your microphone. No I've got one, it here. No one heard me say that. Okay, good. good. Well it's done. there. No one, I am. No one heard me doing what you said. Good, thank you. You must have you must have um, a bit too much stubble then, because maybe it's rustling against the um, the chiselled features and the the jawline. Let's and the get stubbles. back to MotoGP. Uh, so I'm yeah. sure it's fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, MotoGP was like London buses because all of a sudden uh, Francesco Bagnaia won his second uh, Grand Prix on the trot after his first debut uh, a week ago, uh, chased all the way by the Yamaha of Fabio Quattro closing and closing. It looks like he's going to be the champion. Um, an amazing result by a satellite Ducati, satellite being the non-works, the privateer team, the Ducati satellite team of last year's Moto2 champion, Ania Bastianini who came from four, from 12th to finish the fabulous third. That's what I love about MotoGP. You know, the guy in a privateer, second-rate team was on the podium. Uh, no Brits in MotoGP this weekend. Cal Crutch and, and Jake Dixon have both been uh, pushed out. They were in temporary rides anyway. Moto2, Sam Lowe started second, finished fourth. Lowe's our only real front-running Brit doing MotoGP. Jake Dixon back in Moto2, only 20th. Not sure where he ended up, actually. Uh, Moto3, John McPhee, 19th to 13th. Pedro Acosta, our star of the year. Um, only a seventh. He's sort of, sort of I think he's the others are quick. Yeah. quick. He's going back a bit. Uh, so good, so always entertaining. I mean, the racing was still incredibly close. World Superbikes, amazingly close. Wins for Scott Redding, Britain Scott Redding and Jonathan Ray. Um, only two second places for Toprak Razgatliogu. Very this good. This guy. Ray, I think, I think it's Ray, all Toprex, now got a one-point lead in that. It's a fabulous battle world superbike, so well worth following you, a bike fan. Uh, I think Top Rank had a, had a engine failure in race one and battled elbow to elbow with Ray, uh, who won that final race. So great stuff, world superbikes, always exciting. Um, that was the bikes. Over to America next. Are we going? Where are we going? Finally catching up on last well, week. Laguna Seca. On last it was Laguna Seca for, for IndyCar. And yep, Alex Palo, Isaac Palo, almost there. Great. Just watching Indy cars around the Gunas Sakers, just great. You know, the, the track limits is a very thin curb, not a curb a car wide, apart from the very final hairpin. And after curb, there's, there's desert and sand. So that's a good uh, track limits for you. 
So Palo <laughs> almost he came second. It was a dominant win by Carlton Herter, who that's his home track. His dad won there famously. And uh, Hertz, Hertz has sort of started the season as the superstar, but he's had bad runs in the middle of the year. But uh, but Palu came to the second, this Spanish kid that's you know, emigrated from Spain to Japan to work his way around to IndyCar. So he's, he's virtually, if he finishes above 11th at the finale in Long Beach, he's won the championship, which is great. Uh, but Pato Award, the other real championship contender for the McLaren team, he struggled a fifth, not really got the car handling well. But the sounds, star was Romain Grosjean. It sounds Romain. like an old old man's name, doesn't it? Pato Award. It sounds like yeah, a no, the Mexican kid. <laughs> uh, but Romain Grosjean was a star. He stayed out longer and longer, which is, I mean, the IndyCar have got the tyres right. They've even got that right. You know, Formula One have these flipping tyres that nobody knows if they'll really last. It's always, you know, they say that the reds will only last 20 laps. Not the reds, sorry, the, the um, softs. Yeah. And then they go and last 40 laps, you know, and they don't seem to know. But America, this is, you know, the softer red and the, and the harder black. And there's a big difference between them. Um, and how you handle that is very much a part of IndyCar. But the two choices, they have to run them. Whereas, of course, in World in Formula One, they can choose which they go on. But, so do you um, think in Formula One they should get away with uh, mid-compound and just have hard and soft? Yeah, just have follow, but they can't. They don't follow IndyCar. But IndyCar always had pace cars, and the Formula One had to call them safety cars because they can't copy anything the <laughs> Americans do. That'd be too low. Yeah, so uh, and if so, Roman stayed out longer than anyone else on the uh, under which tyres he was on at the time. So came out with some really fresh tyres with about twenty laps to go. And just came storming through the field, and he was making. He clattered Jimmy Johnson. Uh, he was desperate trying to get up to the front two. He was catching the front two, but Jimmy was holding him up slightly. Jimmy Johnson, the NASCAR driver, having one of his best drives. He's paid for his drive, and he, I love the fact he's doing it. He's can completely lose his reputation as a racing driver because he's been at the back all year. He's been on the grass and in the barriers. But he was having a really good run to 17th, but Roman just, just came up before the corkscrew <laughs> and clattered into the side of him and escaped and finished third. Um, spectacular racing and I just like it you know Roman Grosjean's out there having an absolute ball after yeah. a miserable midfield Grand Prix career um, the Brits didn't have a very good weekend for the Brits uh, Jack Harvey who was still waiting hoping he's going to be moving to uh, Ray Hull to be in a better car next he got 15th Max Chilton 21st Callum Illot, one of our stars of Ferrari Academy Ball, only got 22nd. I saw Max, um, Ch I saw Max Chilton at uh, Revival. That's the clientele that there are there, by the way. Max Chilton. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, Chilton's there, was he? Yeah. No, you saw the other Chilton. Was that Max Chilton? I'm sure it was Max. Very tall, isn't he, Max? Yes, but his brother was there, probably. I don't know. His brother oh, was yeah. up doing touring cars. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, Callum Illot, Callum Illot. Taking, yep. yeah, he's taking, dipping his toe in the water, but he's with a midfield team and uh, struggling a bit at the moment. But uh, he's got one more race. He's doing last. He's doing uh, Long Beach as well. So that's so. Is he great still spectacle. tied in with Ferrari, or is that all? Yeah, he is. I presume Ferrari are, are paying a little bit. You know, these drivers that, that haven't got. You know, like Albon, obviously Red Bull are paying a bit of money to Williams to get him that drive. So I think it's great if that is true that these academies, when they can't actually get them into a Grand Prix car because there aren't the places. If they're, you know, funding them to race elsewhere, I um, congratulate Ferrari and Red Bull for doing that, and, and yeah, the more the merrier. Yeah. So um, then America, obviously, NASCAR. NASCAR again was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> if you like motors, I'm sorry, you've got to watch American racing, you boys. You'll turn your nose at a lot of people. But uh, on this Bristol, this one-mile bowl, it's one of these amazing packed crowds and they're banging doors all the way around 500 laps. Um, but there were sort of three contenders running out front. Um, the two teammates, the Chevy teammates of uh, Chase Elliott, who actually looked quicker than, um, than Kyle Larson. But they were battling sort of door to door with Kevin Harvick's Ford. And um, on one move for the lead, halfway through the race, Harvick just ran up the road and clouted um, Chase Elliott, who got a puncture. So Elliot then had to pit and went a lap down. So Elliot then comes out with fresh tyres, catches the leading pair, which is now um, Kevin, Kevin Harvick and, and Larson. And so when he over, it's easy to overtake with fresh tyres. So he deliberately pushes Harvick up the wall, clatters into him. They, they, you know, they do that the last couple, and then got ahead of Harvick. Who didn't get How do they get yet. away with that? How do they get away with not getting? Because that's the rubbing is racing. It's the famous NASCAR rubbing is racing. Wow. But of course, now he's ahead of Harvick, who's leading, but he's got Carl Larson right behind Harvick. 
So now he deliberately stays there and just takes the line, takes the arrow, backs him up. So he's constantly backing Harvick up to his main car, Larson, even though he's a lap down. Like, so no blue flags and have to let people buy. Then Larson made an amazing move when you because it's so hard if someone's taken the high line, you have to get down the low line, but then you and then you got as soon as you're at a car length ahead, you've got to get up in front of the car you're trying to overtake. And he just squeezed in front of Harvick. Harvick then pushed him deliberately down the straight. You can see him down the straight, he pushed into the back of Larson's car, trying to take him out deliberately. Um, but went on to win the race. And afterwards, this is what you love about NASCAR. Well, no, well Larson was doing his donuts with the steering wheel out the window, which is his little <laughs> trademark, big donuts and smoke and holding the steering wheel out of the wheel. You've then got these pictures that happen so often, you know, of Harvick and, um, and Elliot you know, pointing fingers, big security men in between them. Harvick afterwards saying, I'm in a mood to rip someone's head off. You know, this is what, this is what we want Max and Lewis to do. This is what we want. Let's see them poking no, each other's can, eyes we, out. They're gentlemen. Uh, racing drivers are gentlemen, especially Formula 1 drivers. But if I get on the podium, I'm going to do... I'm going to do donuts in my car and hold the steering wheel. Oh, I'll stay on wheel back. No, you're right. Here. <laughs> so it's very great entertainment. Yeah, okay, if you purists don't like it, then you're missing something. That's all I'm saying. Get uh, on it. Okay, well, you let me know. So tell me, the Bristol one-mile um, ring, well, tell me yeah. um, what sort of lap times they're doing there for one mile? No idea. 20 uh, seconds or something. I don't know. Round, round, must round, be round, 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 they're usually about round. three hours races. And of course, it was also the race when we've lost four of the, of the 12, 16. We're down to 12 now. So you slowly go down, slowly go down from Amazing. 16 to 12 to 8. I do like, I do like that uh, format at the end. It's all to play The for. drama's yeah. building. The drama's yeah. building. Brilliant. Okay. But don't forget, it was, it was number five, Carl Larson, the one in the end. Yeah, with a little bit of help. With a little bit of help from his teammate. <laughs> so the highlight for last weekend, it seems like a long time ago now. and We apologise for being late. Uh, the highlight, which was because we were filming some uh, brand new caterings, by the way, which will be on our YouTube channel on Sunday. Um, but the highlight for me, without any question, was you racing. Well done, Tiff Nadell. Next week, we got Formula One back in Russia and Formula Two is supporting as well. And Formula Three. I, I missed out when I was thinking. Yeah, Formula Two and Formula Three. Wow. But the okay. rain forecast is pretty heavy coming up this weekend. So you're that on, could be an embarrassment. It, you? You're already on it. But why oh, would it be embarrassing? Really? It'll make it exciting. It'll make it... Not if, not if they don't race. Not if they don't race like they have yeah. to spar. Yeah. Okay, That's you got a point there. Um, IndyCar finale at Long yeah, Beach. Yeah, Long Beach, always spectacular. Again, you know, Palu's almost crowned. If he, if he doesn't win, if... if, if um, Pato Award wins, he's got to finish 11th or higher, so that's pretty much a walk through. But it's still be a spectacular race, always is. NASCAR, NASCAR. Go to Las Vegas, yeah. Las Vegas, baby. Be Las Vegas. That'll be fun. Um, BTCC, Silverstone, the short circuit. I wish they did the Grand Prix circuit for BTCC because that short circuit is too short. It's like it's like a night out, a hot rod night out with a banging <laughs> window. Uh, bikes, um, World Superbikes are Heris, uh, British Superbikes, Alton Park. So plenty for everyone, whether you're looking at the telly or going to Silverstone or, or watching the bikes. Brilliant. So, yeah, as always, a great weekend of motorsport to come around the world, which we hope to highlight to you next week. And on that note, you like that. good night. Well, good morning, <laughs> good night. Wherever, wherever you happen to be. But uh, see you next week. <laughs> Cheers. Bye. Bye.